What's going on guys? Tyler Smith from TopSoundDesign.com here. So today we're going to look at the playback engine options. So we're going to click in setup and playback. And here you see we have all of our options for what we can play back with. So I'm going to click the Scarlet 2i2 USB because that is the interface I have currently. And we'll wait for this to roll on up for us. Okay, so we're going to click back into Playback Engine, and it says we have the Starlet 2i2 working for us. Alright, and now let's go to the hardware buffer size. Now the general consensus when it comes to this is 1024 samples is better for mixing because it gives your computer more time to process um, plugins and the tracks and what's going on. But when it comes to recording with that extra sample, buffer size your latency is going to be greater um, so if you go down to those here that means your latency is going to be minimal but at the same time it's not going to let you process a lot of tracks and plugins at the same time uh, without getting errors unless you're running a really powerful computer um, but i'm just running a laptop here so i run into the problems of when I'm mixing, even at 1024, sometimes I'm running too many plugins at the same time, causes errors. But down to host engine, uh, you see ignore errors during playback. I always have that. Uh, minimize additional IO latency. I normally keep that checked. Um, you don't have to, there's not really a big difference in that. Uh, the dynamic plugin processing that disperses the plugin processing of the AAX plugins and Pro Tools over all your CPUs. It's generally more consistent without that checked, but uh, either way, I keep it checked or not checked. The one thing to take away from this is for recording purposes, it's better to have it at 32, 64, or 128. Um, I don't really find 128 and 256 to be that much help. I either go with 32 when I'm recording, so I have minimal latency, but I'm only recording one track at a time, mind you. And 1024 samples for mixing. That lets me have all the processing I can get from my laptop for all the plugins I'm using and all these tracks. You can see how many tracks I got going here. It's definitely not a minimal session for running on a laptop, that's for sure. Sometimes I have to inactivate these drum tracks to even not have problems uh, at 1024 samples. So just some quick tips in this short video. We're going to keep on rolling through Pro Tools, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.